Okay, now we're going to do our finish work on the body. Stand up for me, buddy. And let me find my shears. On him, unlike what I did on my red and white, I'm going to use a curved pair of shears. But I'm going to do the same thing I did to Josie. We're going to set the line with his foot on the table so I can make sure that it's off the table when I go to trim the rest of it. Normally I would have the table up a little bit higher, but then I have to adjust the tripod, so I'm bending over, even though I have an electric table. Then I'm going to pick up the foot, and anything that falls over the edge of the pad is going to get trimmed off. Remember, I don't run my hand down the back pad like I do the front. This is the way I do this. Everybody will develop their own technique, but this technique works really well for me. Now, inside the back leg here, we're going to shake just a cinch where the snap-on didn't catch everything. And I'm using my curves backwards to get my angles the way I want them. Touch up my underline a little bit. Touch up the front leg just a little bit. And again, round the foot. Normally I'd be doing this from a different angle. And I'd be able to see a little better what I'm doing. But I can do it this way. I've done enough bevels to be able to do it this way. And anybody who knows this dog knows he's always jerked on his front feet. Pick it up. Anything that is sticking out, we take care of. Now, on the front legs, we take a brush or comb. Brush everything towards the pads. Run my hand down it to get it tight. And again, anything that sticks out past the pad gets done at a slight angle with my curves. You can use straights, you can use curves. Some people you use thinners. You use whatever you feel like using, whatever's comfortable for you. Hey, buddy. Thank you. I know, you're ready to go up. He hasn't been on the table that long, but he thinks he's been on the table an eternity. You have seen most of the work that I have done on him on the video clips. I did bulk his back out when I thought the camera was running and it wasn't, but that might have been five minutes. It wasn't long to bulk the back out and set my lines roughly. I'm going to do the same thing on this side to get on the other. Uh, uh, uh. Keep your foot on the table. You see Luke? Okay. Calm the foot, pull the hair down. Scissor it at a slight angle, just so that the hair is tighter at the pad than it is on the outside and it'll double up for you. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that I did not touch the top of the foot because it comes up into the leg hair. I'm going to go back now and tighten it up just a little bit so that it does come right up into the legs. But you do not touch the top of the feet if you don't have to. If you run your snap-on comb down the top of the feet, it's going to look funny and you're going to have a weird shape. That's when people have a hard time beveling is when you've taken off that hair. You need this hair to bevel. Touch up my underline a little bit more. Bulk up a 
little bit of hair right there that I'm not happy with. Set this bad boy. I know that not everybody gets coppers in the doom, and so we don't get to practice bevels a lot, but I do bevels on Yorkies, on Shizu, on coppers, and it's all the same technique. I would say I probably learned how to do copper bevels while doing Shizus. Anything full coated or in column legs, I want bevels on the bottom to keep them off the table, off the floor, and keep them a little neater. To me, they just look better. So then we're going to fluff this up, and you can see we have a nice clip that we can now bevel the rest of the way in. There we go. Put our angulation here. Let's see the slip. You'll also notice I'm not back brushing. The reason I don't back brush this type of coat is that it's going to fall anyway. I want it to lay the way that it was done. I want it to lay the way it naturally grows. Back brushing it is just going to make it harder to get it to look that way. It may not be perfectly even every hair, but the shape is there and that's where the hair is going to fall so it leaves some fill if it's not perfect. with that. I'll go back and touch them up a little bit. But overall, I'm happy with that. And see how fast that was? It doesn't have to take forever to do pet bevels. In the copper ring or a competition ring, or if he was showing, I would spend an hour on those feet. But there's no reason to do it in a grooming shop at all. These feet are perfectly fine for what I have of a dog. They match the dog's haircut, and they were super fast and easy to do. Finish touching them up, and then we're off to the crown. I always save this crown for last. I'm not really sure why, but I do. All right, let's stop this and start another one.